Hello and welcome to another section of this complete Nest.js course. In this section, we are going to learn how to implement pagination in Nest.js. So, pagination is a technique used to divide large set of data into smaller, more manageable chunks or pages. Instead of loading and displaying all the data at once, which can lead to performance issues and a poor user experience, pagination displays a subset of the data and allows users to navigate through the remaining data using page controls. So here you can see an example of pagination. You might have seen this in many web applications where when user clicks on the page numbers, he is redirected to that page and the data in that page is displayed to the user. So the pagination can be implemented from the API side. From the client side, we can request data from the API and we can tell API to send us only the requested data for a given page. So for example, with the request, we can specify that we want data for a specific page number and in that page, we want to have a specific count of records. So pagination is helpful when you do not want to fetch all the data at once from your application. Instead, you might want to fetch, let's say, first 10 records for the first request and then when the user wants next 10 records, another request will be made from the client side application and it will fetch next 10 records and so on. Pagination helps us avoiding overloading network bandwidth with a huge amount of data in the response and it also makes data retrieval quite faster. So if we talk about the importance of having pagination, First of all, pagination provides improved performance. Loading a large data set can significantly slow down the application. And that's why pagination reduces the initial load time by fetching only a portion of the data, enhancing the performance of the application. And since the performance is enhanced, it also provides an enhanced user experience. So what we do is on the client side in the UI, we break data into pages, making it easier for user to browse and find the information they need. And it avoids overwhelming users with an endless scroll of data. Then it also reduces server load. By fetching only the required data for a specific page, pagination reduces the load on the server and database. Another advantage is pagination makes efficient use of resources. So pagination optimizes network bandwidth and memory usage by transferring only the necessary data. And as the data set grows, pagination ensures that the application remains responsive and usable. And that's why having pagination in your application is very important when you're going to load a very large data set. And as I mentioned, we can implement pagination in the API itself. In the API, we can write a logic where from the client, we will get the information that how many records we need per page and for which page we need to send data from the API. So this information will come from client. And in the API code, we can use this information to implement pagination while sending the data to the client. So as I mentioned, when requesting for the data from the client, with the request, we can also specify the page number and the number of records we want in the response for that page. So here, when we are making a GET request to get all the tweets, with that GET request, we are also specifying some query parameters. So here we have two query parameters, limit and page. You can name these query parameters anything based on your requirement, but here I'm calling it as limit and page. Now, this limit query parameter tells how many records do we want per page? Here I have specified it as 10. That means per page we are requesting for 10 records. And we can also allow user to change this number. We can allow user to set this limit value as 10, 30 or 50 based on the requirement. Then with the request we are also specifying for which page we are actually requesting the data. So here I have specified the page as 1. So from the API, we are going to get first 10 records. When I specify the page as two, then from the API, we are going to get next 10 records. That means records from 11 to 20. If I specify the page as three, then we will get records from 21 to 30 and so on. So when requesting for the paginated data from the API, we have to specify 
these query parameters with the request. So this is how we request for the pagination data. With the request, we specify the query parameters. We usually call it as limit and page. Limit specifies how many records do we want per page and page specifies for which page we are requesting the data. Okay. So this information we are going to send from client. The client can be Postman, your UI application or a mobile app, etc. Now, remember that when we are going to write the pagination logic in our NestJS application, there we need to write the pagination logic in such a way that it can be used for any type of data. So we should be able to use the pagination logic for users, tweets, comments, etc. The pagination logic which we will write, it should not be any entity specific. All right, so the limit and page will come from the client and these information we will use in our API code. Now from the API code, when we will send the paginated data, there we also need to structure the response in such a way that on the client, it will be easier for users to navigate from one page to another. So for example, in our application, we are going to create a pagination response like this, where we will have three main properties, the data, which will contain the paginated data. So if the user has requested, let's say 10 tweets per page, then in this data, which is going to be an array, we are going to send 10 tweets. Okay. Then apart from data, we are also going to have this meta property, which is going to store information like how many items per page we are sending with the request. Then we will also tell how many total items do we have? For example, how many total tweets do we have or how many total users do we have? So that information we will also send with the response. Then in the response, we will also specify what is the current page for which we are sending the data. And we are also going to specify how many total pages are there. So this information can be used in front end to implement the pagination UI. Okay, so for example, if the user wants to highlight the currently selected page, then from here, the user will get what is the current page. And based on that, he can highlight that page. So for example, in the UI, we will have pagination something like this. So here we have all the page numbers and we also have the previous and next button. So if from the response, we can get what is the current page, then that can be easily highlighted in the front end, right? And also, if we know how many total pages are there, then that also can be displayed in the UI, the total number of pages. So all those informations we are sending with this meta property. And apart from meta property, we are also going to have this links property. In this links property, we are going to have the important links, which can be effectively used in front end for navigating the user from one page to another page. So first of all, we are specifying what will be the first page. And for that, we are specifying the URL. So if the user clicks on page one, a request will be made to this URL. And for that, the data will be fetched from the API and it will be displayed to the user. Then we are also specifying the last link. So basically, if the user directly wants to go to the last page, then for that also we are specifying the link. And in this case, when the user will click on the last button, he will be redirected to the last page and the data available for the last page will be displayed to the user. Then we are also displaying the link for the current page, next page and previous page. This is important for implementing the next and previous button on the UI. So to make things simple from the front end side, we are sending this type of response from the API. Okay. So from the next lecture, we will start writing such a pagination logic, which can be applied to any entity. And when sending the paginated data to the client, we are going to send this type of response to the client. So in this section, let's learn step by step how to implement pagination in NestJS application. And let's start by first creating a DTO for the pagination in our next lecture. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions from this lecture, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.